Chapters 11 to 18 of Exodus from the World English Bible. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anton Epp. The Book of Exodus from the World English Bible. Chapters 11 to 18. Chapter 11. Yahweh said to Moses, Yet one more plague will I bring on Pharaoh and on Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go. When he lets you go, he will surely thrust you out altogether. Speak now in the ears of the people, and let them ask every man of his neighbor, and every woman of her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. Yahweh gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Moses said, This is what Yahweh says, About midnight I will go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, even to the firstborn of the female servant who is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of livestock. There shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there has not been, nor shall be any more. But against any of the children of Israel a dog won't even bark or move its tongue, against man or animal, that you may know that Yahweh makes a distinction between the Egyptians and Israel. All these your servants shall come down to me, and bow down themselves to me, saying, Get out with all the people who follow you, and after that I will go out. He went out from Pharaoh in hot anger. Yahweh said to Moses, Pharaoh won't listen to you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and Yahweh hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he didn't let the children of Israel go out of his land. Chapter 12 Yahweh spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be to you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to their father's houses, a lamb for a household. And if the household is too little for a lamb, then he and his neighbor next to his house shall take one, according to the number of the souls. According to what every one can eat, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, a year old. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at evening. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel, on the houses in which they shall eat it. They shall eat the flesh in that night, roasted with fire and unleavened bread. They shall eat it with bitter herbs. Don't eat it raw, nor boiled at all with water, but roasted with fire, with its head, its leg, and its inner parts. You shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, but that which remains of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. This is how you shall eat it, with your waist girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. For I will go through the land of Egypt in that night, and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and animal. Against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am Yahweh. The blood shall be to you for a token on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and there shall no plague be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be to you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to Yahweh. Throughout your generations you shall keep it a feast, by an ordinance forever. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away yeast out of your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. In the first day there shall be to you a holy convocation, and in the seventh day a holy convocation. No manner of work shall be done in them, except that which every man must eat, and that only may be done by you. You shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations by an ordinance for ever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread, until the twenty-first day of the month, at evening. Seven days shall there be no yeast found in your houses. For whoever eats that which is leavened, that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a foreigner or one who is born in the land. You shall eat nothing leavened. 
In all your habitations you shall eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel, and said to them, Draw out, and take lambs according to your families, and kill the Passover. You shall take a bunch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. For Yahweh will pass through to strike the Egyptians, and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, Yahweh will pass over the door, and will not allow the destroyer to come in to your houses to strike you. You shall observe this thing for an ordinance to you and to your sons forever. It shall happen when you have come to the land which Yahweh will give you, according as he has promised, that you shall keep this service. It will happen when your children ask you, What do you mean by this service? Then you shall say, It is the sacrifice of Yahweh's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when he struck the Egyptians and spared our houses. The people bowed their heads and worshipped. The children of Israel went and did so, as Yahweh had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. It happened at midnight that Yahweh struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of livestock. Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. He called for Moses and Aaron by night, and said, Rise up, get out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go, serve Yahweh, as you have said. Take both your flocks and your herds, as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. The Egyptians were urgent with the people, to send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We are all dead men. The people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes on their shoulders. The children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they asked of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and clothing. Yahweh gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they let them have what they asked. They despoiled the Egyptians. The children of Israel traveled from Ramses to Succoth, about six hundred thousand on foot who were men, besides children. A mixed multitude went up also with them, with flocks, herds, and even very much livestock. They baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it wasn't leavened because they were thrust out of Egypt and couldn't wait. Neither had they prepared for themselves any food. Now the time that the children of Israel lived in Egypt was four hundred thirty years. It happened at the end of four hundred and thirty years, even the same day it happened, that all the armies of Yahweh went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed to Yahweh for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. This is that night of Yahweh to be much observed of all the children of Israel throughout their generations. Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no foreigner eat of it, but every man's servant who is bought for money, when you have circumcised them, then he shall eat of it. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat of it. In one house shall it be eaten. You shall not carry forth anything of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall you break a bone of it. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it. When a stranger shall live as a foreigner with you, and will keep the Passover to Yahweh, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it, and he shall be as one who is born in the land. But no uncircumcised person shall eat of it. One law shall be to him who is born at home, and to the stranger who lives as a foreigner among you. All the children of Israel did so. As Yahweh commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. It happened the same day that Yahweh brought the children out of Israel, out of the land of Egypt, by their armies. Chapter 13 Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Sanctify to me all of the firstborn, whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of animal, it is mine. Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of hand Yahweh brought you from this place. No leavened bread shall be eaten. This day you go forth in the month of Abib. It shall be when Yahweh shall bring you into the land of the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Amorite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite, which he swore to your fathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, that you shall keep this service in this month. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to Yahweh. 
Unleavened bread shall be eaten throughout the seven days, and no leavened bread shall be seen with you, neither shall there be yeast seen with you in all your borders. You shall tell your son in that day, saying, It is because of that which Yahweh did for me when I came forth out of Egypt. It shall be for a sign to you on your hand, and for a memorial between your eyes, that the law of Yahweh may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand Yahweh has brought you out of Egypt. You shall therefore keep this ordinance in its season from year to year. It shall be, when Yahweh shall bring you into the land of the Canaanite, as he swore to you and to your fathers, and shall give it you, that you shall set apart to Yahweh all that opens the womb, and every firstborn which you have that comes from an animal. The male shall be Yahweh's, every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, and if you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck, and you shall redeem all the firstborn of men among your sons. It shall be, when your son asks you in time to come, saying, What is this? Then you shall tell them, By strength of hand Yahweh brought us out from Egypt, from the house of bondage, and it happened, when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that Yahweh killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of animal. Therefore I sacrifice to Yahweh all that opens the womb, being males. But all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. It shall be for a sign on your hand, and for symbols between your eyes, for by strength of hand Yahweh brought us forth out of Egypt. It happened, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God didn't lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war, and they return to Egypt. But God led the people around by the way of the wilderness by the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up armed out of the land of Egypt. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had made the children of Israel swear, saying, God will surely visit you and you shall carry up my bones away from here with you. They took their journey from Sakoth and encamped in Etham, in the edge of the wilderness. Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them on their way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, that they might go by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night didn't depart from before the people. Chapter 14 Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they turn back and encamp before Pihiroth, between Migdol and the sea, before Baal Zephron. You shall encamp opposite it by the sea. Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will follow after them, and I will get honor over Pharaoh, and over all his armies, and the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh. They did so. It was told the king of Egypt that the people had fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was changed towards the people, and they said, What is this we have done, that we have let Israel go from serving us? He made ready his chariot, and took his army with him, and he took six hundred chosen chariots, and all the chariots of Egypt, and the captains over all of them. Yahweh hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. For the children of Israel went out with a high hand. The Egyptians pursued after them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, his horsemen and his army, and overtook them in camping by the sea, beside Pahiroth, before Baal Zephon. When Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they were very afraid. The children of Israel cried out to Yahweh. They said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you treated us this way, to bring us forth out of Egypt? Isn't this the word that we spoke to you in Egypt, saying, Leave us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it were better for us to serve the Egyptians, than that we should die in the wilderness. Moses said to the people, Don't be afraid. Stand still, and see the salvation of Yahweh, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall never see them again. Yahweh will fight for you, and you shall be still. Yahweh said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Speak to the children of Israel, that they go forward. Lift up your rod, and stretch out your hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go into the midst of the sea on dry ground. I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall go in after them. And I will get myself honor over Pharaoh, and over all his armies, over his chariots, and over his horsemen. 
the Egyptians shall know that I am Yahweh, when I have gotten myself honor over Pharaoh, over his chariots, and over his horsemen. The angel of God, who went before the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them. It came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel, and there was a cloud and the darkness, yet it gave it light by night, and the one didn't come near the other all that night. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and Yahweh caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all the night, and made the sea a dry land, and the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued, and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all of Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. It happened in the morning watch, that Yahweh looked out on the Egyptian army through the pillar of fire and of cloud, and confused the Egyptian army. He took off their chariot wheels, and they drove them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let's flee from the face of Israel, for Yahweh fights for them against the Egyptians. Yahweh said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come again on the Egyptians, on their chariots, and on their horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it. Yahweh overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The waters returned, and covered the chariots and the horsemen, even all Pharaoh's army that went in after them into the sea. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus Yahweh saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work which Yahweh did to the Egyptians, and the people feared Yahweh, and they believed in Yahweh and in his servant Moses. Chapter 15 Then Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to Yahweh, and said, I will sing to Yahweh, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Yahweh is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. He has cast Pharaoh's chariots and his army into the sea. His chosen captains are sunk in the Red Sea. The deep covers them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, Yahweh, is glorious in power. Your right hand, Yahweh, dashes the enemy in pieces. In the greatness of your excellency, you overthrow those who rise up against you. You send forth your wrath. It consumes them as stubble. With the blast of your nostrils, the waters were piled up. The floods stood upright as a heap. The deeps were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall be satisfied on them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, Yahweh, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. You, in your loving kindness, have led the people that you have redeemed. You have guided them in your strength to your holy habitation. The people have heard, they trembled. Pangs have taken hold of the inhabitants of Philistia. Then the chiefs of Edom were dismayed. Trembling takes hold of the mighty men of Moab. All the inhabitants of Canaan are melted away. Terror and dread falls on them. By the greatness of your arm they are still as stone, until your people pass over, Yahweh, until the people pass over who you have purchased. You shall bring them in, and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, the place, Yahweh, which you have made for yourself to dwell in, the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands have established. Yahweh shall reign for ever and ever. For the horses of Pharaoh went in with his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea, and Yahweh brought back the waters of the sea on them. But the children of Israel walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dances. Miriam answered them, Sing to Yahweh, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. Moses led Israel onward from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur.
and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Mara, they couldn't drink from the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore its name was called Mara. The people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Then he cried to Yahweh. Yahweh showed him a tree, and he threw it into the waters, and the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them, and he said, If you will diligently listen to the voice of Yahweh your God, and will do that which is right in his eyes, and will pay attention to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians, for I am Yahweh who heals you. They came to Elam, where there were twelve springs of water, and seventy palm trees, and they camped there by the waters. Chapter 16 They took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron in the wilderness, and the children of Israel said to them, We wish that we had died by the hand of Yahweh in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat-pots where we ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then Yahweh said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from the sky for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. It shall come to pass on the sixth day that they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Moses and Aaron said to all the children of Israel, At evening, then you shall know that Yahweh has brought you out from the land of Egypt, and in the morning then you will see the glory of God, because he hears your murmuring against Yahweh. Who are we that you murmur against us? Moses said, Now Yahweh shall give you meat to eat in the evening, and in the morning bread to satisfy you, because Yahweh hears your murmurings which you murmur against him. And who are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against Yahweh. Moses said to Aaron, Tell all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before Yahweh, for he has heard your murmurings. It happened as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of Yahweh appeared in the cloud. Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At evening you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread, and you shall know that I am Yahweh your God. It happened at evening that quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay around the camp. When the dew that lay had gone, behold, on the surface of the wilderness was a small round thing, small as the frost on the ground. When the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, What is it? For they didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread which Yahweh has given you to eat. This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded. Gather of it every one according to his eating, and omer a head according to the number of your persons. You shall take it, every man for those who are in his tent. The children of Israel did so, and gathered, some more, some less. When they measured it with an omer, he who gathered much had nothing over, and he who gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. Moses said to them, Let no one leave of it until the morning. Notwithstanding, they didn't listen to Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and became foul. And Moses was angry with them. They gathered it morning by morning, every one according to his eating. When the sun grew hot, it melted. It happened that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much, two omers for each one. And all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. He said to them, This is that which the Yahweh has spoken. Tomorrow is a solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to Yahweh. Bake that which you want to bake, and boil that which you want to boil. And all that remains over lay up for yourselves to be kept until the morning. They laid it up until the morning, as Moses asked, and it didn't become foul, neither was there any worm in it. Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath to Yahweh. Today you shall not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day it is the Sabbath. In it there shall be none. It happened on the seventh day that some of the people went out to gather, and they found none. Yahweh said to Moses, How long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? 
Behold, because Yahweh has given you the Sabbath, therefore he gives you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Every one stay in his place. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. The house of Israel called its name manna, and it was like coriander seed, white, and its taste was like wafers with honey. Moses said, This is the thing which Yahweh has commanded. Let an omer full of it be kept throughout your generations, that they may see the bread of which I fed you in the wilderness, when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt. Moses said to Aaron, Take a pot, and put an omer full of manna in it, and lay it up before Yahweh, to be kept throughout your generations. As Yahweh commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. The children of Israel ate the manna forty years, until they came to an inhabited land. They ate the manna until they came to the borders of the land of Canaan. Now an omer is a tenth part of an ephah. Chapter 17 All the congregation of the children of Israel traveled from the wilderness of Sin, by their journeys, according to Yahweh's commandment, and encamped in Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses, and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test Yahweh? The people were thirsty for water there, and the people murmured against Moses, and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to kill us, our children, and our livestock, with thirst? Moses cried to Yahweh, saying, What shall I do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. Yahweh said to Moses, Walk on before the people, and take the elders of Israel with you, and take the rod in your hand with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb. You shall strike the rock, and water will come out of it, that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because the children of Israel quarreled, and because they tested Yahweh, saying, Is Yahweh among us, or not? Then Amalek came and fought with Israelite in Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Choose men for us, and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with God's rod in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had told him. He fought with Amalek, and Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. It happened when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. His hands were steady until sunset. Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Yahweh said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, that I will utterly blot out the memory of Amalek from under the sky. Moses built an altar, and called its name Yahweh our banner. He said, Yah has sworn, Yahweh will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Chapter 18 Now Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses, and for Israel his people, how that Yahweh had brought Israel out of Egypt. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, received Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her away, and her two sons. The name of one son was Gershom, for Moses said, I have lived as a foreigner in a foreign land. The name of the other was Elizer, for he said, My father's God was my help, and delivered me from Pharaoh's sword. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife to Moses in the wilderness where he was encamped at the mountain of God. He said to Moses, I, your father-in-law Jethro, have come to you with your wife and her two sons with her. Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed and kissed him. They asked each other of their welfare, and they came into the tent. Moses told his father-in-law all that Yahweh had done to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the hardships that had come on them on the way, and how Yahweh delivered them. Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which Yahweh had done to Israel, and that he had delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Jethro said, Blessed be Yahweh, who has delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who has delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that Yahweh is greater than all gods because of the thing in which they dealt arrogantly against them. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for God. 
Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moses' father-in-law before God. It happened on the next day that Moses sat to judge the people, and the people stood around Moses from the morning to the evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that you do for the people? Why do you sit alone and all the people stand around you from morning to evening? Moses said to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a matter, they come to me, and I judge between a man and his neighbor, and I will make them know the statutes of God and his laws. Moses' father-in-law said to him, The thing that you do is not good. You will surely wear away both you and this people that is with you, for the thing is too heavy for you. You are not able to perform it yourself alone. Listen now to my voice. I will give you counsel, and God be with you. You represent the people before God, and bring the causes to God. You shall teach them the statutes and the laws, and shall show them the way in which they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, you shall provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating unjust gain, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Let them judge the people at all times. It shall be that every great matter they shall bring to you, but every small matter they shall judge themselves. So shall it be easier for you, and they shall share the load with you. If you will do this thing, and God commands you so, then you will be able to endure, and all of these people will also go to their place in peace. So Moses listened to the voice of his father-in-law, and did all that he had said. Moses chose able men out of all Israel, and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. They judged the people at all times. They brought the hard causes to Moses, but every small matter they judged themselves. Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. End of chapters 11 to 18